do you want this giant knife that they clearly used to break into the car? And the police is like, throw it away. Everything just went into the trash can. Hi, I'm Becky and my car horror story happened to me. I had just moved out of an ex's house. We'd just broken up. I was just about to start a new job. So all these big changes were happening. I woke up to go to my first day at this job and I went out into the street. It was a very wide street with like palm trees and like bushy trees lining the road. And then I was like, why is there like a forest in the street? And I started walking closer and closer to it. And I was like, huh, oh, it's a fallen tree, but it's huge. And then I was like, that's really close to my car. I realized it was very close to my car and that it was upon my car and nobody else's car in the whole street, just mine. And this tree was like one of those ones that is like, you would draw this tree or you would paint this tree. Like this is worth your time. It's huge, nice thick trunk. Any other situation, I'd have loved this tree. I love a good tree. It's like straight across, like smashing the roof and the windshield down. It was so dramatic. The first thought I had was just like, this is really embarrassing. I'm having to be like that one person just like plodding towards of the scene like every all the neighbors were out and they're all just like oh my god what a what a catastrophe and then there's me just like it's mine everyone's trying to help i'm like what are you gonna do i couldn't even have it evaluated by the insurers because it was covered by trees so i had to like call the city to come and bring people in to like remove the tree and they're like sawing and like there's all these like huge trucks everywhere and then there's me embarrassed and the neighbors like trying to help and they're all like oh yeah the soil's loose around here they're all trying to like amp me up to sue the city and they were like yeah yeah trees always fall down around here and um, they don't water them properly so i was just getting really mad because i believed them i tried to contact the city about it and they just didn't care they were like how are we to be in control of the trees and i was like because they're yours you planted them we just can't promise that. I'm like, what if it fell on a children's hospital? You care then? But they didn't care about my car. I literally had just bought this car. I'd spent months researching the car I wanted to buy when I could afford one. They evaluated it. It wasn't salvageable. <laughs> so that's sad. I kind of felt like something okay would come out of it. When I figured out how to get a replacement through my insurance, I actually got more money than the car was worth. And I ended up getting a little bit of a nicer car out of the whole thing. And it meant that I had like a clean break spirit spiritually because the car had nothing to do with my ex. Then I got a new apartment, new job, which they allowed me to come back in because they understood my car was under a tree. You know, it was hard to fake that. Hi, I'm Erin and I'm gonna tell you my worst car horror story. I came down to go to work and I park in a gated garage underneath my apartment building in a tandem space with my roommate. And so I walk downstairs to get in my car and head on to work. And my roommate's car is in the most forward parking space in our tandem spot, but mine's missing. Initially, I was really freaked out. I wasn't sure where it went. I thought maybe she moved it to the street or something. I went ahead and called her and I was like, hey, uh, did you see my car last night? She's like, yeah. You didn't move it or anything this morning, did you? And she's like, no. I was like, okay, well then I'm pretty sure it got stolen. So I was like, did they break into my roommate's car, move her car, then break into my car, take my car and then move hers back? Nothing made sense. But we ended up figuring out that my spare key was in her cup holder and then somehow got my car out of its spot and out the door. First things first, I call the police. The police are super doubtful. They're like, that doesn't happen. I understand it doesn't happen. I'm confused, file a report, whatever. Everyone thinks that my roommate stole it. Next up, I call insurance. Insurance is also like, that's not how cars get stolen. And I was like, I understand. I'm also very confused. Finally, I go to my building manager and I'm like, hey, this happened. Can you pull footage? How they would steal my car in this position, everything like that. Eventually, my building manager calls me and he lets me know that one of the security guards who patrols our area in our building saw a tow truck come into our garage and he suggested that I was repoed. And I was just like, there's no way in hell, like you need to still pull the footage. Like I need to see what actually happened. He finally sends me the footage and it's two girls who somehow get into the garage. Like either they have a code to get in or they had a clicker, I'm not sure. And they walk literally directly to me and my roommate's car. And what we end up seeing is that like there wasn't a car parked in the space next to us. So they were able to like turn and get my car out through the spot next to it and this drive out. I go about like six or seven days without a car and I'm just kind of like waiting for the 30 days to pass so I can get a brand new car. I was like, there's no way they're tracking this down. Like this thing is so gone. In the morning, I finally get a call from a police officer like six or seven days later. This is a police officer. I'm just wondering if you were able to find your car yet. And I was like, no, I haven't. He's like, okay, well we found it. It was at a park, so just down the street. And he was like, we've been sitting on it, like trying to see if anyone's gonna come back and get it. I drive over and the cop is just sitting there and he 
hands me gloves and says, go ahead and search the vehicle and make sure there's no drugs. I was a little thrown off. I was like, why don't you do this? But okay, so me and my boyfriend are looking through the car, kind of pulling out everything. And what we find is like a bunch of fast food bags, three pairs of fake eyelashes in the dashboard, used condoms in the cup holder, a giant kitchen knife hidden in the side. There's like ponchos. They stole everything out of the back of the car. And there were like eight phones connected to the Bluetooth. We're pulling all this stuff out of the car and like showing the police officer. I'm like, do you want this giant knife that they clearly used to break into the car? And the police is like, throw it away. These used condoms, he's like, throw it away. Finally, I'm like, there's weed on the back seat. He's like, brush it off. Everything just went into the trash can. They were just like, case closed. You're all good. Give this to insurance. They should cover whatever it is that's missing. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I think they just had a really great week in my car and just partied in there and then gave it back. There could have been some illegal behavior. But for a while, it was like speculation that like someone in the building was behind it or like the security team was behind it. But like, I've decided to just let it go. It was for sure an inside job in some way, but if it was my neighbor who stole my car, like I'm watching you. So my name's Kaylin, and today I'm gonna tell you about one of my worst car horror stories ever. I take this one normal, very specific route that's very traffic heavy. And as I was driving down the road, my car started smoking. And I was like, what the f is going on? And so I call my dad and I'm like, dad, the car's on fire. What do I do? And then I see that like my temperature gauge or whatever is all the way at the top. I got out of the car and I was like, should I open the hood? So luckily my dad called me like, don't you dare f open that hood. He said, just give it a second before I like try to open anything up. So then I like tried to move my car even more to the side and I was able to like pull off to a side street. I did not have any water on me because you're supposed to have like water or coolant like in your trunk. And I'm in like the basically the middle point of being a mile or two away from any gas station. So I think I drove like five minutes and then stopped again because it started smoking and then another five minutes and then almost got to the gas station stopped again and it started smoking and then drove another five minutes finally made it to the gas station and put coolant in there and then it took like two hours from this point for it to cool down enough for me to like drive it again there's actually a dealership nearby it was about two miles away and it was like a 15 20 minute drive with the traffic so I was like inching my way there literally like a caterpillar it was like an hour-long break in between every time that I stopped. So this whole process was at least five to six hours. And basically the dealership was already closed. So I essentially had to just like leave my car in front of the dealership and like hope that it didn't get towed there. And I'd called them, let them know that like that was my car out front and I needed it to be looked at because it was overheating. I do remember they said that I essentially melted the piece that connects the engine to the coolant. I basically did the same thing again the next day where I drove the car for five minutes took a break until I made it home. But it was still like a three hour process once again. Got the car home and just like dropped it off there because it was just like dead to me. I think I was carless for about a week, but my dad dropped off um, one of his cars and I have one parking spot in my garage. And I live in a very residential neighborhood in LA. So like I never have issues with street parking. There's like no signs posted in my neighborhood. Okay, well I'll just move the dead one to the street so I can like use my parking spot. Like that'll be much more convenient for me. But apparently there's a law that states that you can't leave your car street parked in the same spot for more than 72 hours. I didn't check on the car for like a full week. I get a call from the Glendale Police Department and they informed me that my car had been towed and impounded. So I was stuck in Arizona for a week and my car was essentially collecting dust and dollars in the impound lot. Yeah, it's gonna be about a thousand dollars to get your car out of this impound lot. And I was like, are you? me. I'm like, how much more money is this car going to take away from me? And it's not even a nice car. Like, I don't even need it. Can you guys just keep it? Can you guys like destroy it or something? And they told me that if I did that, then it would like basically like plummet my credit score. So that wasn't an option. So I ended up spending like around probably like $1,200 just to get my dead car out of an impound lot. It was a great experience.